Today I'll be talking about niacin or vitamin B3, which is a water-soluble vitamin. It has a number of functions. It's part of two coenzymes that exist that participate in at least 200 reactions in the body. It assists or plays a role in the metabolism of carbohydrate and fatty acids, as well as DNA replication and repair. Generally, you'll find niacin in the supplement form as nicotinamide, and it can be synthesized in the liver from tryptophan from Turkey, and you need approximately 60 milligrams of dietary tryptophan to make one milligram of niacin. Again, that occurs in the liver. I've listed the DRI for you for men and women, but you can also find that in the book. Food sources, as with most of the vitamins, enriched grains, beef, chicken and turkey that I mentioned, and fish. It is heat stable, so you're not going to lose a lot of niacin when you do cook your food. In order to free nicotinamide, NAD and NADPH have to be hydrolyzed. As with most of the vitamins, it's absorbed in the small intestine, and there is a carrier-mediated diffusion which occurs. It's sodium-dependent. And the primary transport form is nicotinamide and nicotinic acid. It is trapped within the NAD and NADP in the cell. In order to be metabolized and excreted, it has to be degraded, as I've said before, to nicotinamide and then ADP ribose. Once the nicotinamide is uh, methylated and oxidized uh, in the liver, products are excreted in the urine. Niacin deficiency results in something called pellagra, and it's characterized by the four Ds dermatitis, diarrhea, dementia, and then finally death. So obviously with dermatitis, there's some skin changes that occur. With the diarrhea, there are gastrointestinal changes. The dementia is a result of neurological changes, and ultimately death will occur if that deficiency is not corrected. The treatment involves the administration of 300 milligrams of niacin daily in three divided doses. So in other words, 100 milligrams of niacin, TID, or three times a day, for one month to correct the deficiency. And this is a picture of the dermato dermatological manifestations of niacin deficiency in an alcoholic, the before and after the treatment. It almost looks like a sunburn. Um, so you can see the difference after this individual has been treated for the deficiency. In terms of toxicity, the upper level is 35 milligrams per day. They have used large doses to treat hyperlipidemia, pharmacological doses is what we call them. There was a particular drug on the market called Niaspan. I'm not sure if it's still on the market now by one of the major pharmaceutical companies. And I did have several patients on it and they didn't tolerate it that well. So I'm not sure again if it's still on the market. It causes flushing and high doses, burning, tingling, itching. It can make you pretty uncomfortable, believe it or not. Too much of it can cause liver damage, glucose intolerance, blurred vision, <clears throat> excuse me, and edema in the eyes, which nobody wants. How do we assess for uh, vitamin B3 adequacy? We can measure urinary metabolites, and then of course there are uh, serum and red blood cell indicators, NAD and an NAD, uh, NAD to NADP ratio. Again, I haven't seen this necessarily done in the clinical setting. We're more often than not checking fully in B12 and vitamin D for some of the common vitamins that we assess the uh, nutritive status for. And that concludes my lecture on niacin.